Starting with the mini game during the loading screen, the Wii U eShop is probably the most inviting online store ever created. The design and layout are among the best Nintendo has ever done. The music perfectly complements the design and changes depending on the day you stop by. It's not as iconic as the Wii Shop channel music, but it's still really good. And the Wii had way more people listening to it. Though the lights are about to dim on the Wii U, not that the lights were all that bright to begin with, the Wii U struggled to get any footing in the home console space. It's unfortunate because it's often judged on a surface level. It isn't revolutionary compared to the competition, but it was a big step forward for Nintendo. It's the home to many firsts for them. This was the first Nintendo console to output in HD. It was the console that many games were first made available, and it was the first time we saw handheld games added to the eShop for their home consoles. That list doesn't sound like much, but they were a big deal for Nintendo. Sure, the gamepad was different and had some interesting uses, but the Wii U is more than just the gamepad. It has a robust digital offering that's going to be difficult to ever have again. And though a portion of it has migrated over to the Switch's online service and other collections, much of it will be lost when the eShop closes. The Wii U ended up being the lowest selling home console Nintendo has ever released, but it holds some of the most accessible and affordable ways to play Nintendo's increasingly high priced legacy games. The Wii U has some of the best games Nintendo has ever made. Games like Mario Kart 8, NES Remix Pack, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, Bayonetta 2, Super Mario 3D World, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Pikmin 3, Hyrule Warriors, New Super Mario Bros. U, Xenoblade Chronicles X, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Most of these games have been given a new life on the Switch, which is great because they deserve to have a second chance. Other than the Wii U developed games, the eShop is where you could buy digital games. All the games previously mentioned could be purchased digitally there as well, giving a more convenient way to buy your games. The eShop also gave access to the Virtual Console. The great thing about the Virtual Console is that you bought these games individually, meaning you didn't have to pay for games you were never going to touch, like you do with the Switch's online service. Instead of perpetually paying for those games, you paid for only what you wanted and got to keep them for as long as the console worked. The Wii U Virtual Console also let you remap controls for any game, which is something that's been lost in the transition to the Switch. It offered games from all the classic Nintendo consoles, and was supported by not only Nintendo, but also Capcom, Konami, Square Enix, and many others. The NES made its comeback after being a dominant force on the Wii Virtual Console. Most of the major Nintendo published games showed up here. All three Super Mario Bros. games along with both Legend of Zelda's, Metroid, and Punch-Out. You know, the classics. Though there were two games that were kind of a big deal. The first game is Duck Hunt. This didn't release on the Wii Virtual Console. It's a light gun game that was difficult to translate over to modern TVs. Up until it was released on the Wii U, you needed to play it with the NES Zapper and a heavy CRT TV. With the Wii U version, you could use a Wii Remote and a modern TV. It's a big deal that this iconic game was given a modern overhaul and it worked great. Unfortunately, this game is only available on the Wii U and will be lost after the closure. The second game is Earthbound Beginnings. It's the first game in the Mother series. It's notable because Nintendo never released it in North America or Europe. They had planned on putting it on the NES back in the early 90s, but with the Super Nintendo launch on the horizon, they decided against the release. We finally got to play the official game on the Wii U, and it's fun. It's also available on the Switch, so it won't be lost, which is a good thing. It's significant that the Wii U was the console Nintendo decided to debut it on. Super Nintendo games look and play fantastic on the Wii U. All the heavy hitters made it onto the Virtual Console. Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, F-Zero, and Super Mario Kart. The biggest game to come to the Super Nintendo was definitely Earthbound. It was the first time it was available digitally. It was great to see Nintendo support the Earthbound series on the Wii U. Luckily, it was also added to the 3DS Virtual Console and is now on the Switch's online service. Castlevania Dracula X was also released on the Wii U and is significantly less expensive than the physical cartridge. This too is available on the Switch with the Castlevania Advance Collection, but for quite some time this was the easiest and most affordable way to play the official game. Another perk to playing these games on the Wii U was that you could use the official NES and Super Nintendo controllers that came with the NES Classic and the Super NES Classic consoles. These controllers allowed you to play those games in the most authentic way possible without using the original consoles or controllers. 
The most unexpected additions to the Virtual Console were the Game Boy Advance games. This was the first time Nintendo released any handheld games digitally for their home consoles, and they didn't hold back on the games they made available for it. The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap, all three Castlevania games, Wario Land 4, WarioWare, and the Super Mario Advance games, which are the remakes of Mario 2, 3, 4, and Yoshi's Island, and they are terribly named. Super Mario Advance being Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3, and the worst out of all of them is Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3. Though, this is a must-own game out of all four, because it has additional levels. The original game on the Game Boy Advance was compatible with the e-reader. It let you scan cards to unlock levels and items. Nintendo included those additional levels on the Wii U Virtual Console game, and these levels are really creative and extremely fun to play. These are Mario 3 levels most people have never heard of or played, and they only exist on those e-reader cards and the Wii U. They are disappearing with the eShop closure. Two more games that are worth picking up are Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Fusion. These are two great games that have gone up in price considerably over the years. They really aren't worth picking up the physical cartridges anymore. These games look and play phenomenally on the Wii U, and are worth the $5 Nintendo is asking for them. The Wii U gamepad made it possible to play DS games on the TV, which was something that just made sense. You have a second screen that allows DS games to be played on the console. These games will most likely never be available again on a home console or maybe even a handheld, because of the two-screen layout. A good amount of great games were made available like The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, and New Super Mario Bros. It's a shame that these games will only be playable on a DS or a 3DS when the eShop closes. They are worth playing, and taking away an affordable option is not something to celebrate. We all know that the Metroid games have steadily increased in price, and that includes the Prime games. The Metroid Prime trilogy has always been a bright spot in the Wii U eShop. It was a place you could buy all three games for $20. The price for the physical games has gone up considerably, and with the closure of the eShop, they are bound to increase even more. There are also many other Wii games available in the eShop, like Kirby's Return to Dreamland, Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Wario Land Shake It, and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. If you already own these games physically, they will run on your Wii U, because it's backwards compatible with just about every Wii game. The Nintendo 64 was also represented in the Virtual Console. Most of the notable titles you expected to be there were there. The one title that was somewhat surprising to see added was Donkey Kong 64. It's the only time we've seen it on another console besides the Nintendo 64 itself. With the eShop on the verge of closing, it really puts into perspective how fickle the digital marketplace is. There's no denying how convenient it is to buy games from it, but they are temporary. They will come and go with the wind. It just goes to show how solid retro consoles were with their handling of games. Games from decades past had to be complete in order to ship and be successful. There was no way to get a patch out to improve or even finish the game. They've been able to live on well past the consoles themselves, even getting newer updated consoles to play them on modern televisions. They will most likely live on well past our lifetimes, but those days have passed us by. Digital marketplaces will be the way people will get their games for the foreseeable future. The Wii U's eShop was a bright spot for the console. And even though the Wii U may not have been the success Nintendo wanted it to be, it offered much more than what it was given credit for. For most, it was an outdated, uninspired console that was better skipped in favor of something else. However, for those who gave it a chance, it ended up being one of the best consoles they ever owned. From the many great games developed for it, to the fantastic eShop and virtual console games, the Wii U was a supremely inspired piece of gaming hardware.